Hello, welcome, welcome to day five. I'll turn the mic, the speaker off so I don't hear the echo. This is a bit of a bummer. I just about an hour ago recorded this voiceover and then I realized that the mic was muted and I didn't notice it on the audio meter, which was not smart. That's why I'm starting out with this black uh, so I can explain that and while we get into the script. So here we go. It'll be interesting to do this a second time. I'm extremely disappointed because I had a lot of great insights. It was just an amazing thing. And now is it lost forever or will I remember what I was talking about? So we left off when Lexi and Holly had the conversation. We found out that Holly knows a lot more than Lexi about what's going on. And Lexi's big surprise sort of got ruined because Holly already knew about it. So... What I'm thinking in this kitchen scene is that what Holly pictured is, you know, she, it's been all these years. She basically considers that she's kind of wasting her career slash life. And so now this is her big moment of freedom. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if she was not really remorseful, but a little bit melancholy and thinking that, uh, you know, this is really coming to an end tomorrow. I'm not going to see her again and all that. So that was the point of the kitchen scene, which, again, i doing this voiceover about 30 days after I wrote this part of the script, so I don't really remember if this scene is still in the, the current draft or not. But anyways, so now we're in Lexi's bedroom, and... Um, I figure she's got to talk to someone, and who better than her best friend, Abby, so they're going to talk. And I thought I'd use FaceTime just so we could see both faces. Otherwise, obviously, you could do an intercutting back and forth. Um, you could do just a one-sided phone call, whatever. When I do early drafts of scripts, I imagine like everyone, I would say that typically the dialogue is a lot more in quantity, if not quality, hopefully not quality, than when you go back and do subsequent drafts. Because especially early on, you're just letting the characters talk, you're getting to know them a little. And even though I've got somewhat of backstories, especially on Lexi, I don't really know that I have that much of a backstory on Abby. Um, well, I, I sort of do from the previous incarnation of this story idea. But anyways, I just like to let them talk knowing that most likely I'm going to cut out a good portion of what they say or maybe pick up key phrases or something and use them in subsequent drafts. So if it's maybe going to end up being a page scene or a page and a half, in other words, a minute or a minute and a half, it may start out as two pages or two and a half or who knows what. But when you get back to that old screenwriting 101 that I keep harping on, that every line of dialogue has to move the story story, move the story forward. What was that other thing I said? Move the story forward and or reveal character and hopefully do it with subtext, which I think I feel like I maybe stumble on subtext more than I write it on purpose, and I don't know if that's typical or not. But when you really think of it, and sometimes it, it can really get daunting, and you kind of psych yourself out of writing scenes because they just can't say, Hey, Betty, how are you today? Oh, Tina, I'm good. How's the weather? Um, that's how real people talk. That's not how you talk in movies. So as you listen to me, and hopefully are reading the screen to see what's going on, the actual content of the scene, you can see that even in an early draft, I'll go back and completely change things, reword sentences. I'm always trying to make the dialogue as concise as possible. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. That happy birthday to me line comes out of an earlier script that I wrote and produced and directed. It's called The Key. You can see it on Amazon Prime or you can rent it on Amazon. I'm not saying you should, but uh, it's doing pretty well in the UK, surprisingly. I don't know why. It's not doing that great in the US. And when I say doing well, I've made about 10 pounds sterling or whatever the 
monetary unit is. So I'm not in it for the money. But the point is, I included that line in that script. And so it's in this one. I'm not sure if it's going to survive or not. But um, I thought it was kind of a fitting end to that scene because it's officially her birthday now. And she's saying it sort of as a woe is me in a woe is me kind of way because what she thought was going to be a super happy birthday, maybe not so much. So then the scene in Holly's bedroom is basically a parallel because I was thinking, well, is Holly going to be celebrating? Is she going to be super happy? Is she going to be, you know, looking at maps of Miami to find out what's going on? Is she going to be reading up on the case? No, she is laying in bed. I picture kind of like one of those hacky sack balls with some whatever they have in them, and she's throwing it at the ceiling. And what that demonstrated, my purpose behind that, was to show kind of the precision because it's like every time, boom, 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 it's the same thing. And so we don't really know what she's thinking. As I wrote there, her mind a million miles away. Again, maybe a little bit of um, second guessing herself to see because... You know, she thinks she's doing the right thing, but she doesn't know. All right, so now it's the next day, and Gary and Larry has arrived. And again, Screenwriting 101, start a scene as late as you can and early, end it as early as you can. So in this case, um, obviously Gary and Larry have learned to some extent what's going on. Gary is asking a question. And I found it interesting in the last couple of maybe three scripts I've written, and maybe I could go back and look at old scripts that I've written and see how many times I have people answer questions with questions. I know that's a thing that like um, comedians, not comedians, but people do in improv. There's a game where you answer a question with a question. And what's interesting is that you can have two characters talking. It's harder to do with three or four, but you can have two characters talking and maybe talking about different things, but somehow relating what they're saying. They're, each of them is sort of in their own head. And um, that was kind of the idea there. And I've really found that, I don't know if it's a crutch, maybe it's a crutch, but it, it helps me move the scene forward and say things that aren't just question and answer, question and answer, question and answer, because... For the most part, unless you're writing a procedural police show and you're in a courtroom or something, that's pretty boring. Um, so that was that was sort of there. So now in Holly's SUV, what I was thinking is we met them briefly at the beginning of the movie when, you know, the kid, not really kidnapping, but the thing takes place. And then we see him 14 years later. They break the news. And so I was thinking, how much does Lexi really know about Holly? Um, and as you see here, I, I got the idea of, has Holly ever had a boyfriend, a serious relationship? Certainly the U.S. Marshals couldn't forbid her from doing it. I mean, if she got... That's a whole different story. She got She falls in love and gets married, and then the guy finds out what she's doing, that would be interesting, but that's not the focus of this story. Um, so then I'm thinking, well, what what would this conversation be like? And would Lexi, as I'm writing right now, um, what if she got in, what if Holly got in a relationship with a guy and then had to tell her, had to tell him the truth? Um, I also slipped in there, Lexi is saying, no matter how pretty you are, acknowledging that she, a.k.a. Holly, is pretty, which is a compliment. Um, maybe Holly is happy to hear that. I don't know. Um, Holly's response, basically, you'd be surprised. It doesn't really tell her anything other than, yeah, maybe I've had some boyfriends, um, I've dated some men or whatever that you don't know about. Because when you think about it, uh, after Lexi got into school full time, Holly had what four or five, well, six hours a day at least uh, that she didn't have to, you know, protect her. Not that she had to protect her all the time, but so what has she been doing that whole time? We don't know for sure. There's really no indication in the script, and I don't know that there needs to be. 
but I guess it all is sort of revolving around did she have a boyfriend and Lexi has really never thought of that she's just always thought of her as her aunt Holly um, and then the she the scene shifts maybe maybe a little to comedy but Lexi has been wrapped up talking to Holly looks in the rearview mirror and realizes where is Gary's car where are they and looks over at the speedometer and sees how fast Holly's going which is I don't know where I came up with that idea I I know I wanted them to arrive at the place that they're going a fair amount before the others um, and if you know if you do the math and these guys are going 100 miles an hour and Gary and friends are going 70 or 75 and it's a two hour drive, they would in reality get there quite a bit before them. Um, but in this case, the point is, A, they will get there before them and B, Holly is fearlessly driving. Um, and then... Uh, Oh, yeah, then we kind of end that scene with Holly bringing Lexi back to the present reality that uh, you've got to explain things, and Lexi immediately thinks, oh, yeah, that's right for Gary, and Holly's like, no, your mother. And as a right there, uh, hits her like a ton of bricks. So, I mean, that... I don't know. I was just thinking about scenes having beginning and the end, you know, raising stakes, ticking clock, all that kind of stuff. So I think that might do that a little bit. So where are we now in Gary's car? And I thought it was kind of funny that we saw they're going like 105 and Gary is saying, man, they must be doing close to 100. We don't see how fast they're going, but it doesn't really matter. Um... Yeah, so they're, again, I'm just getting to know these characters. Gary and Larry, as with some twins, and I will say that uh, two of our sons are twins, and I think I've already said that part of the reason for this is that so they can be in the movie because they are actors. Um, and they, I mean, they have a good relationship, a loving relationship, but definitely some back and forth, some give and take some good natured ribbing sometimes the the ribbing isn't so good natured um and so that's kind of what's going on here so i'm i'm as i'm writing this i'm thinking how well do they get along where does abby fit into this um is she because again sort of abby and larry are maybe dating or or better friends than abby and gary um I'm just reading <laughs> once in a while. I got to pause and see what I'm writing here. I, I guess the point is here, a little stumbling and bumbling, that Gary feels like he is getting the short end of the stick in terms of information. And um, then Larry is sort of wondering too, has Abby not told him something that she should have? And so there's a, a little... I mean, good-natured ribbing, a little, not anger, a little angst. Not really angst, I guess. But I think the point in this scene, what is the point in this scene? I think just, again, to establish the three of those, three of their relationships. That doesn't sound like proper English. Um, but that's basically it. And to obviously we got to see them a little bit because we need to know a little bit more about them so right there I guess I'm again you can see where I go back and forth in my outline where I'm kind of sort of writing dialogue um, but then that stuff just piles up at the bottom of the script and obviously it's not the script per se now right here um, I think this is when I went online and checked to see what sort of racetrack they would go to. And so I found this place called Championship Racing in Oklahoma, which is a real place. And I figured, hey, maybe we can film there and we can scratch each other's back. I say we film there, I, not that I'm going to make this movie, but 
I'm not going to say I'm not. If anyone is watching this and you have a lot of money you need to invest for some reason, this baby is not going to cost much to make. So message me. <laughs> so anyways, um, so this is a real place. Obviously, this could take place nearly anywhere um, with a little bit of rewriting. But so again, they get there before the others and... Lexi, the idea, part of the idea was of them driving fast is when they get there, Lexi is basically saying to Holly, hey, I don't want you joining in on the fun. I don't want you taking part in the race. Holly's comeback is, well, in that case, you really don't want me to go axe throwing with you, which, wow. The, <laughs> I'm just thinking of my lips, Max, and I'm upset at myself. So that's sort of the point of this scene. It's not really the point. I've, I've lost my train of thought. Um, Lexi is, is obviously wondering, does Holly have time? Where does she get the time? Does she keep training? You know, what is involved really in being a U.S. Marshal? And we get a little bit into that, but I think people have a good enough idea of what a U.S. Marshal does. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. The other thing is I'm really trying to make this story as straightforward as possible. My previous films, uh, I should say films and scripts, some of them are super complicated and there's just thick with plot and twists and turns. And I'm trying to make this a little bit simpler. That doesn't have anything to do with the current scene, but... It sort of does because if you've got a super, super tight story, even more so than I've let on, the dialogue has just got to go bang, 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 and the scenes are usually going to be short and snappy. And so since this is a slightly simpler one, I am hoping that the dialogue can blossom a little bit and it can be a little more character driven than story driven. I don't know if that's going to work out in reality, but that is kind of what I was going for in writing this script. It did, I must say, I'm straying from the topic here, but it, it really did help, A, to outline it, and B, that I'm keeping it relatively simple, because even between the outline and what I am writing here and what I'm going to write in the time to come is really uh, help me write the script, at least the first draft. I call it first draft, but it's I don't know what it officially is, but um, it really helps me write it a lot faster because there's a lot less plot that you've got to go back and check. Not that there still isn't a fair amount, and there's still some inconsistencies and continuity problems and everything, but um, anyways. <laughs> so uh, they are talking... Oh, yeah. So the point of this scene was, again, sort of going back to the relationship thing. Has Holly ever had one? And then Lexi kind of gently poking her and saying, wow, you're getting into your mid, late 30s, but there's still hope for you. Maybe you could still have a family. And again, we don't know if Holly has thought about, about this much in the years that have passed. There's really no... Nothing in the script right now about that, and I don't know that I am going to add anything. I think people are going to take this um, on face value or for what it's worth or just maybe not dwell on that a lot. We'll see. So uh, what happens now? Oh, my day five is over. I left right in the middle of that scene just when the others were arriving and I think Gary's going to make some snide remarks. We're going to have to wait until day six to find that out. Well, I hope you enjoyed day five. It was about 18 minutes sped up at five times. So that's about an hour and a half of actual writing. I think I may have mentioned that when I am recording the screen, if I leave the computer, I'll pause it. If I'm doing a bunch of research, I'll pause it. But other than that, I try to keep it going. So if you see nothing happening on the screen, that's usually just me sitting and thinking. Although sometimes I'll cheat and pause it. 
So there's day five. I hope you are, if not learning, at least kind of enjoying the screenwriting journey. It's super interesting, as I've said, to look and see what I have done, especially because, again, as I've mentioned, I'm doing this about 30 days later, and I know a lot of changes have been made, but frankly, uh, at the first part of the script, I don't really 100% remember, especially when I read what I wrote, and I'm like, hmm, that's pretty good, or hmm, that's awful. I wonder if I changed that. So very interesting. I highly recommend it, and I highly recommend you tuning in to day six. See ya.